as a woman, I'm sure there's probably been at least one time in your life where you've dealt with a man who won't open up. Or maybe he just struggles to open up. Either way, it becomes a very frustrating situation. It becomes a very hurtful situation and very confusing. Not just confusing as far as not understanding what's going on with him right now, but confusing in the sense that you don't know how serious he is about you. Like, why does he seem to shut you out? Why does he seem to not let you in and open himself up to you? And the reality is that in many cases, you're dealing with a man who is not ready to be in a relationship, in a healthy relationship. However, there are also many other situations where men commonly struggle to open up about certain specific things. And I want to lay out to you how to, well, to be aware of this stuff, how to handle these specific issues, all right, and what you can do to allow a man to start opening up to you more and being able to have more healthy communication in the relationship. So in no particular order, one of the first things a man struggles to admit to a woman is that he feels neglected. Now, there's a lot for me to say about this, but I want to start with a very specific scenario within this point that I'm making. And this is the scenario where I've seen happen to a lot of couples, whether married or single, who already have kids, okay? And the woman desires to have an additional child. And she's trying to get her man or her husband, let's just go with husband for this example, to have that extra child, and he's very resistant. And what I have come across in so many situations is that the reason why the man does not want to have the additional child is not because he wouldn't enjoy a, a child with his, his woman again. It's the fact that he feels like he's already not getting attention and priority in this relationship and adding another kid knocks him further down the line. And so this does not allow a man to feel like he can allow anything else to come in this dynamic with you two because he's not getting what he needs, all right? And essentially, he is feeling neglected. And a lot of men go through this. And unfortunately, it's very difficult sometimes to admit to a woman that neglect is why you don't wanna have this additional child or neglect is why you're not okay with a family member maybe moving into the household for a little while. Neglect is another reason why maybe he's now not pouring into you in certain ways. Now, that isn't to excuse his behavior. It doesn't mean it's okay for him to be tit for tat, but it's a reality of what happens. Because that neglect is, it feels like rejection to that man, all right? And it's not just rejection in the sense of the woman that I'm trying to be with or that I love is not uh, making herself available for me, not making sure I'm good, you know what I'm saying? But also, my needs are not being met. So neglect isn't simply about giving him attention, so to speak. It's also about the specific types of attention that he's looking for. So it can be emotional neglect. There could be situations where the man feels like whenever you guys talk, it's about what's going on with you, how your day was, how, what, you know, what issues you're facing. And yes, you may ask, I'm laughing because I'm already thinking about something. You, a lot of women may ask the man, how was your day? But the minute he starts telling you, you somehow flip it back to you and what you were going through or what you saw the other day. And it's like he's not being allowed to uh, pour out emotionally or get things off his chest in a way that allows him to feel safe in that moment as well. Because if he feels like me even let's just say complaining about how my day is, is going to be met with more negativity, well, he's just not going to bother. Or if he feels like you're just going to dismiss how I feel, he's not going to bother. So yes, there's a lot of emotional neglect that happens. Of course, there's also sexual neglect, all right? I would probably argue this is, this is a huge issue. I'll just say that. This is a very big issue because, Again, for a lot of men, especially and more specifically in committed relationships or in marriage, they had a certain either expectation or hope of a level of frequency sexually, all right? 
And when that, that hope is now gone because he realizes it's not going down like that, that can cause a lot of problems. And unfortunately, neglect in a relationship, and as a woman, I'm sure you can understand this because if you have ever felt neglected, then it causes a lot of resentment, animosity, and a lot of other issues. And again, the man may in roundabout ways express that he feels neglected, but he doesn't really say it in that clear way in many cases. So he may complain about the, the lack of uh, sexual fulfillment, right? But he's not really expressing how much that is also hurting him. So that's the crazy thing. The, the sexual neglect can turn into emotional hurt as well, because now he feels like you don't even want him like that. You know, do you, it can cause him to question, do you even love him? You have to understand when, you know, in the book, The Five Love Languages, they said one of the most common love languages for men is physical touch. And a lot of men equate the woman's willingness to be intimate with him, with her loving him. And so when he's not receiving that, that again can be hurtful. It it can be frustrating as well as what happens biologically to a man who's being denied uh, his needs being met, all right? There's a lot that goes into it, which I think a lot of women don't understand because in fairness, you're not wired like a man. You don't feel what he's feeling. You don't realize how big of a deal this is for him. To you, it's like, well, it's just sex for some of y'all. Not all women think like that, but some of you be like, it's just sex, it's no big deal, that shouldn't be a problem, but it is, it is. So ultimately, to wrap this point up, neglect is a huge issue. It is definitely something that men feel or struggle to open up about because they feel like there's going to be a backlash or dismissal of the issue. And they also don't want to feel like they're coming off as needy at times. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you've ever made them feel that way. So be mindful of that and pay attention to the cues that are telling you there are issues in that area. And let me just say this. Also, if you're watching this video, ask yourself, when I talk to him, do I ask him how his day is? Do I listen to him? Do I meet it with encouragement, positivity, love, or am I reacting negatively to it? When it comes to the sexual side, am I making sure he's good? Not by your standard, but by his standard. So you don't even have to necessarily wait for something else to happen before you just explore if this is an issue. No, ask yourself these questions now. And if those answers are not the right ones, let's start making changes. All right, so now let's get to the next thing on this list. So another thing that men struggle admitting to a woman is that he's jealous, all right? And so I would argue, listen, I think that for most individuals who have any kind of feeling, even when men don't have feelings, because I think it's important for women to understand that men can be a lot of men. It's always a lot. It's not necessary. It's never all. But a lot of men can be very territorial. All right. So I think it's important before I continue that you understand jealousy does not equal real feelings. All right. Being territorial does not equal real feelings. I have seen plenty of men who had no serious interest in a woman, no plans to escalate the situation to a real committed relationship, still be extremely territorial and jealous, not wanting her to talk to anyone and doing everything in their power to block her from speaking to anyone. So you've got to understand that though, though, though jealousy is very common and I would say that the person who does have feelings is probably going to have moments of it depending on what may happen in a relationship or what scenarios pop up. Just understand that it itself does not equate to something real being there. All right. But getting back to the main point at hand, a man being jealous, like no one really likes to say, yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> like I think some people are, are cool being real about it. But most people, they feel some kind of way admitting to that. And so what you have in a lot of scenarios is people trying to act tough, act like they're they're not bothered by it. Or worse, worse, is that out of the jealousy, rather than admitting it and confronting it, retaliating. All right. And so a lot of people, 
whether they are just dating, whether they are married, long-term committed relationship, they get jealous and now it's, I'm going to make you jealous. I, I'm going to make you feel what I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? And it's just an unhealthy behavior. It, and, and, and if you have ever found yourself doing that, please check yourself. I say that with love, but check yourself because that kind of retaliation, any kind of retaliation usually leads to an escalation of the issue to where things are going to only get worse. All right. And it becomes this never ending cycle of trying to one up each other. And, and what happens in there is that all we're doing is planting negative seeds that will now grow into something worse, if not right now, later on. So a lot of men, yes, you know, if, if they're dating you, maybe they see you out with another guy because again, you're dating, you're single, you're free in this example to date who you want. They may feel some kind of way. Hell, it may just be seeing you in a picture and they don't know who the guy is. <laughs> and there's a level of jealousy. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of different things. But guess what? The jealousy does not stop at other men. The jealousy could be, going back to the example I gave in, in part in the first reason, the kids. There are men who are jealous of the kids because the kids seem to be getting more love and attention than him. It could be jealous of other family members because they get more respect, more love than him. It could be jealous of the friends because you seem to open up or it's kind of hitting my spirit because I've come across this before where, and this won't apply to everybody, of course, but there are some women who have male best friends, okay, and have, you know, said this is a platonic, it's, it's nothing serious. But what the man in her life has seen is that you speak to this best friend in a way that you don't speak to him. You seem to have a level of comfort with the best friend that you don't have with him. And yes, granted, maybe there are some things that he is not aware of or not doing that he could do better that would help you have that with him. But regardless, he sees that. And yes, there creates jealousy. But again, People don't want to come off as insecure. They don't want to, they don't want to make it an issue. They don't want to be, feel like they're coming off as weak. And more specifically, we're talking about men. So they won't say anything, but they start to have a problem. And this is also hitting my spirit because a lot of times in these situations where people have these opposite sex friendships and you know, some people will say, well, it shouldn't be a problem. We should be allowed to have friends. And yes, I do believe we should be allowed to have friends. I do think there needs to be boundaries. I do think that some friendships seem to cross a line where it, it's doing too much, <laughs> in my opinion. All right. But I, I think that what happens is sometimes the woman is saying to the man, my friend is harmless you know, he's never made a pass at me. He doesn't see me like that. But his problem is what he sees in you towards your friend. What he is sensing and is making him uncomfortable. And for any of you who may not fully connect with that, consider the shoe being on the other foot. Where you see this, this female friend that he has. And sometimes, yes, the female friend may be respectful to you, may 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 not have caused any specific issues, but you're sensing something in him that seems to be like there's something there. And of course, it not only makes you jealous, it makes you concerned. It makes you have struggle to trust him and this situation. So bottom line is jealousy definitely creeps in a lot because again, if when we do have real feelings, it's very easy to become jealous, all right? What's popping in my head now is, and I, I hope I'm saying this correctly, I believe God at one point is referenced as a jealous God because he loves us so much, he ain't trying to see us worshiping other gods, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's normal when you love someone for those intense feelings to start to cross those certain lines, but we have to be mindful of not mishandling that being honest with each other, creating an environment where it's not about jealousy anymore, where we feel more secure with each other so we can have a healthy relationship. All right, so let's keep this going. Now this third one, I should have warned y'all in the beginning. There's gonna be some on this list that might throw you off, all right? And this is this might be one you weren't expecting. But I, 
I always put things on the list for a reason. There's a purpose. So let's get to it. The third thing a man struggles admitting to a woman is erectile dysfunction. All right. Now, I felt the need to make sure this was on the list because one, it's a real thing. It, it's happening and it's happening more often now than ever before. There's a lot of different reasons for it. Low testosterone in men, testosterone levels are at some of their lowest, if not the lowest it's ever been in life. All right. There's a lot of other outside influences contributing to the issue. And I think it's important that we talk about it because let's start with this one a lot of women, and you may have been in this situation, you're internalizing his inability to get up in that moment, right? And you and you may start to wonder what's wrong with you. And I want you to understand that, no, a lot of men, though they may not be able to articulate to you, they have a general issue of erectile dysfunction. And some of them may not have come to terms and, and, and grasp that, that they have this issue, right? But Again, there's other things contributing to it. So one thing I will let be known is many of you are probably not aware of the fact there's something called porn-induced erectile dysfunction. So some men, especially younger generations who, who grew up on porn, right? They've gotten to a point that they've, they've basically exposed themselves to so much digital stimulation that now they struggle with real world, real woman stimulation. And there's a lot more to it. I'm not a doctor, but I want to put it out there so maybe you can look into it and be more educated about it. But it's a real issue. So there's things like porn-induced erectile dysfunction. There's also, as I said, low testosterone levels. A lot of men not taking proper care of themselves. All right. Depression. There's a lot more cases of men being depressed. And that depression leads to struggles in the bedroom as well. So even though, you know, I know sometimes I've even made jokes about it could be World War III out there. Men still want to get it on, right? But, but not every man is like that. If they're too bogged down emotionally, they can't perform in the bedroom. So again, as a woman, do not be quick to internalize it and make it about you. And, and that's part of one of the reasons why men won't want to admit it. One, they don't want you to think it's a you issue, right? But also, it's just not the easiest thing to say, I have erectile dysfunction. Now, of course, I think for every man who is struggling in that area, one, there are cures, there are ways to fix this, and I would encourage them to do so. And as a woman, if you ever come across a situation, again, it's very easy to start thinking, is something wrong with me? Don't go to that mindset. Go to, okay, well, how can we make this better? What can we do to work on this? But let me say this, because I've seen this tons of times. There are women who did handle it the correct way, tried to encourage the man, and he didn't want to do anything about it. And you, I just personally do not feel like you need to hold yourself prisoner to this relationship. And I know if it's marriage, it's a little more complicated, but hold yourself prisoner to, to a man who does not want to fix a fixable issue. All right. And you should not have to now. Now you become the one who's neglected because now you can't have your needs met. So maybe he has come to this. I don't even say peace, but acceptance of his issue to where he's like, oh, I don't care about sex anymore like that. But it's still important to you. Or if it is still important to you, then we can't just ignore that. All right. He has to be willing to go get help. But again, understand help can uh, be found, how can be done. Now, of course, listen, you, you want to make sure you're always doing your part in a relationship um, as far as how you show up to, to cultivating a proper environment for you both to be pleased in the bedroom. But again, he has to be willing to do his part. But again, bottom line is erectile dysfunction, very common nowadays, a lot more common. And, and let me say this, it's become even more common with men in their 20s or as low as in their 20s. So this is no longer just an over 50, over 40, whatever it used to be issue. Nah, younger and younger men are starting to develop this problem. So it is something that men will struggle to open up about, but be open-minded as a woman as far as what's really going on here and how things can get better. All right, so before we continue, I uh, just wanna mention real quick, 
many of you, I'm always getting DMs and messages and comments about wanting your questions answered, wanting to get coaching, all these different things. So again, I have a special coaching program for you to join. It's called How to Manifest the Man and Life God Has for You. It's an amazing experience. It's going to teach you things like tapping into your feminine energy, hearing God more clearly, meeting relationship-minded men, all right, uh, finding your purpose, and so much more. We're going to do live Q&As where you're going to get your questions personally answered. You're going to have a, a, a support group of women, like-minded individuals that's on the same path of living a better, higher quality life. So take advantage. Join below. You can go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. All right, so now we are at number four on this list. And the fourth thing a man struggles admitting to a woman is when he is struggling and needs help, all right? So this can go in a lot of different directions, but let me start with financially. And let me throw this caveat in there. If he is serious about you, if he has really deep feelings for you, a lot of men, there's a level of pride that's going to kick in that's going to say, I don't want to show the woman that I'm with, that I care about, that I want to provide for, that I can't handle things financially or that I'm going through a rough patch. All right. Not saying again, this is never all men. So are there some men who are just going to keep it real? Regardless, they can love you to death, but they're going to be real. I'm broke right now. I can't do this. Right. But a lot of men, that, that's a sour, that's a, that's a hard, difficult conversation because men have become accustomed to seeing that finances is a real issue in relationships. It is something that a lot of men feel like plays such a huge role in a woman's willingness to not just be with you, but stay with you. Now, whether you agree with that personally, it, it, how much it matters to you, that is the perception that many men have. And so with that, again, he's not going to want to say, I can't pay for this. I can't afford this. A perfect example is like, let's say you as a woman wants to go on a vacation and he wants to be able to make this work with you, but he knows he either cannot handle this or this is going to put him in a very difficult position. And instead of just saying that, he will try to find every excuse in the book to not make this vacation happen, all right? He will drag his feet with getting his time off. And you'll become pissed off because you're like, if he would have just did what he was supposed to do, we could have went. But what you don't realize is he doesn't want to tell you he doesn't really have the money. And you might say, well, I, I would have paid for him. But he doesn't want you to. He doesn't want to have to ask you to pay for him. He doesn't want to put himself in that position. He just rather like find a way to just get around this. Let's forget about it and move forward. So again, I think it's important for men to be more forthcoming and honest and stand strong in the reality that they're living right now. Right. But I do think that as a woman, if you want to avoid this being a problem, you've got to also show him as quickly as possible that his money struggles is not going to be thrown back in his face. His money struggles is not going to cause you to look at him uh, with less respect. Now, I do think there's a difference between a money struggle and a man who's doing nothing with his life, a man who is not trying to improve his situation, a man who is too complacent, all right, and doesn't understand the need to maybe hustle a little bit more to make sure he's in a better place. Outside of that, because you know the difference between the man who's trying and the man who just does not care, you have to be able to let him know that as long as you're trying, I, I'm supporting you. And yes, and, and understand also that support also means it, 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 sometimes putting that vacation on hold, for example. And I'm just using that one example, but don't think support means, well, okay, well, I just want you to know that if you're broke, I'll pay for you. No, he does not want to hear that you got to worry about you paying for him all the time. He just wants you to, he wants to hear that you're going to say, you know what, if we can't go on this vacation right now, I'm not going to be mad at you. 
I'm going to be okay. And I understand that now is not the time to make this move. Let's wait a little bit longer. Uh, um, you know, if, if we're trying to save up for a house, and this is because, again, I'm thinking of specific situations right now. We're trying to save up for a house that you understand that now is not the time to, to buy these other different things that you want him to go out and buy for your house or whatever the case may be. Like he needs you to trust that there's a process to this. And don't put too much pressure on him because that becomes frustrating and, and, and it, it can cause a lot of other problems. But again, financial is not the only struggle. It could be emotionally, depression, you know? And what I feel the need to say is when he is having that depressing moment, it's not simply about you telling him to suck it up. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not saying that that's what you do, but there are women who essentially come off like that. Like you're, that they're just dismissing his depression. They're dismissing how he's feeling. They're acting like, oh, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Or, um, you know, that, that's, that's not a reason for him to be depressed. No, it's not a reason for you. You may not connect to it. You may not relate to it, but it's important to him. And if and the, the shoe was on the other foot, the last thing you would want him to do when you're feeling depressed is to dismiss you. You have to acknowledge where he is. Encourage him from that place. And, and just figure out how can I be helpful to you in this moment and, and in moving forward. All right. Now, granted, I feel the need to mention that, yes, there, are, there might be some men who are lying, who are just trying to use it as a scapegoat. But you don't, you don't discover that by being the pessimist and dismissing him upright because you risk him actually being genuine and now you, you cause a lot more hurt. You will discover that when you're doing everything you're supposed to do and he still seems to not be making any effort on his end. Now it's like, okay, you're using this as a crutch. That's not acceptable, all right? We have to agree on how we're going to work together to make this better. But you have to embrace what he's saying to you. So again, it could be emotional. It could be financial. It's a lot of different things. But the man, it, you know, admitting struggle, admitting the need for help, a lot of times men equate that to weakness. And, and, I, and again, I, I, if I'm talking to a man, I'm going to tell him, like, you can't let that be your perception because that causes so much problems and it creates a very unhealthy environment. But that is why he struggles with it. And so that's why if you want to counter that, when you learn to pour into him the idea that you don't view him as weak because he's struggling, you don't view him as weak because he needs help. You view him as a human being who's having a moment and we all have moments. And when we have those moments, let's encourage each other so that we can come out of it and now move on to bigger and better things. All right, so we got a couple more. Um, I want you to brace yourself for this one. I want you to take a deep breath, all right? I want you to understand it again. Everything I say is with love, all right? But I have to be real with you. So the next thing that a lot of men struggle admitting to a woman is that he's no longer attracted to you. Now, let me say this right away. No longer attracted does not mean you cannot regain the attraction. So if you ever are to hear this, do not think that means it's done, it's a wrap, nothing can be saved here. No, it can't. It just means the attraction has faded and usually that's because things have changed physically or how you're presenting yourself and showing up in the relationship. Now, I know for a lot of you, you feel like, well, listen, if this man loves me, that should not matter. But I want you to understand that love and attraction are two different things. He can still love you, meaning he can still care about you. He can still want the best for you. He can still show you kindness and compassion. But to want to be and stay with you in a romantic, that's the key word, romantic relationship, he needs attraction. And listen, there's a lot of women who listen to this, they need attraction too. Some of you may say, well, I, it's not a big deal to me. That's fine if it's not a big deal to you. But that doesn't mean dismiss that it's a big deal to him. 
And this is the reason or one of the reasons why men have such a hard time expressing this to women because the woman dismisses it or makes it about you don't love me or you're so shallow or how how horrible of you. But that's not fair because we have to be honest with ourselves. If the attraction had not been there from the beginning, y'all would have never got together. So how can we expect you to stay together or at least maintain a healthy relationship with the attraction being gone? That's not how this works. When you remove attraction, you essentially go from romantic relationship to platonic, to roommates, to play cousins, as I say sometimes, all right? Like, yo, it's, it's, it, 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 you ever seen these couples where that's essentially what it turns into a roommate situation? And a lot, and I'm not saying it's not, it's never other issues, but a lot of times a, a big chunk of it is the attraction has gone away. So it's important that one, we always work to maintain attraction in our relationships. We cannot make excuses. We cannot scapegoat love and say love should be enough. No, not when it comes to a romantic relationship. And we have to be willing to ask our partners the level of attraction they need from us. What is important to them? It's not that I want you to cross unhealthy lines to maintain attraction. And that's why the the earlier we can have that discussion as far as what each other needs, the quicker we can discover if we can sustain this. So if, if from the jump, the man tells you, well, listen, attraction to me means as you get older, I'm gonna need you to get your body done and this and that and the other. And you're like, "Uh uh-uh, that's not for me. Well, then right there, we know this is not the relationship for you. If he has expectations that you know you are unwilling to meet for whatever reasons, there's no point in pushing forward because it's only going to become a problem later on, all right? But if he's saying, my level of attraction is I need you to maintain a healthy weight or maintain this specific weight range, whatever the case may be. I I know one couple where the man wants the woman to, he likes her wearing makeup. I'm not here to argue whether that's okay or fair or whatever. I'm saying that is his preference. And if you know this up front and if you're not willing to accept it, cool. If you are, then you cannot make excuses for letting it go later. You have to keep up with that. And so again, it's important that we create an environment where we can constructively criticize each other. Whether it be, you know what, baby, you are getting a little extra weight. <laughs> right? like, like we should be able to say that to each other. And listen, for those of y'all who think I'm picking on women right now, no, I acknowledge that men let themselves go. But the problem that I see so much is women not saying anything to the man about his fall off, not because it doesn't bother you, but because you don't want him to bother you about yours. It's like, I won't call out your belly if you don't call out my belly, all right? Like, I'm going to leave you alone, so you better leave me the hell alone, okay? Don't, and, and that's a trade-off, but it's a trade-off that now can impact the relationship in a way that you guys aren't as intimate anymore. You guys don't show the same level of respect and joy and desire. That's not worth it. That's not worth it. So bottom line, we're going to wrap this point up because I got the other ones to get to. Yes, this is a very hard conversation for a lot of men, and I encourage all of you when you're, when you're even dating is to establish a culture of we can talk to each other about these things, and you don't take it so personally to where now you shut down or you lash back out or you become insecure. You simply understand, no, he is giving me his honest opinion, and I can choose to now take that to work on these things and understand that by doing that, we can have positive results in this relationship. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. And and what I'm going to do with this one is give you number seven. It it was number seven and a bonus. I'm going to kind of tie it all in together, all right? So the last reason plus bonus that, uh, or last thing men struggle admitting to a woman is when you hurt his feelings and the bonus is anything that will hurt your feelings. So first, his feelings. Again, A lot of men struggle with admitting when something has emotionally hurt them. When they are sensitive to certain things you said, they don't want to come off weak. They don't want to come off like they're whining or, you know, and and I think for a lot of men, what has happened is that once upon a time, maybe in their first or early experiences, when they were more forthcoming about 
something hurting their feelings. That woman made them feel less than for expressing that. That woman lashed back out. That woman showed a level of a lack of respect due to him saying, my feelings are hurt. You know, some men have been called the B word. You acting like a little, you know what I'm saying? And that's even more hurtful, you know? And, and now he just shuts down. And unfortunately, and, and of course, I would encourage men to not do this where now they don't open up to anybody because of this concern, because of what happened to them in that previous relationship. And that, that requires healing, bottom line. But like I said, not only when their feelings are hurt, but men simply struggle to admit to a woman anything they think will hurt your feelings. Because now that leads to them having to, you know, coddle you and, 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 and not coddle you in a good way, coddle you in a way of really undermining the real message of what he was trying to say because he's trying to soften the blow up to the point where it dilutes it completely. He's now concerned about your backlash. He's now concerned about you acting a certain kind of way. You know, now tomorrow you're waking up and you're giving the silent treatment. Whatever the case may be, he doesn't want to deal with any of that. So he just avoids it altogether. And then you become frustrated because it's like you don't feel like he's being real with you. You don't feel like he's opening up to you. But you have to ask yourself, are you allowing him to feel comfortable opening up to you? Are you allowing him to see that he can be honest and you won't take it so personally in a way that you will now, your whole attitude will be bad. Now, I understand that sometimes certain pills are hard to swallow. And you may need maybe an hour or two. And I'm, and I'm using that as a time frame that would be good to decompress, all right? To digest, let it out, but to keep dwelling on it. And for him to have to now pay for his honesty for days, weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years. Yes, I have counseled couples where, yes, something he said a year, two years ago is still lingering with this woman. How can we gain more honesty and openness if we have to be worried about something being held over our head or, the, or over the head of the relationship. Now, I said R, I'm going to always be honest because I just feel like I can't live with the denial of the issue. You know, I have to open up about it. But a lot of men are going to struggle with it. And so this is why, you know, again, you always want to make sure you're creating an environment that allows the both of you to be able to be real with each other, all the way real. It doesn't mean we don't learn how to deliver our messages with tact, with love and positivity, but we still have to be honest and be clear and not hold on and suppress things because we're worried about how people are going to take it because now we can never see the progress and, and reach the true potential relationship without being completely transparent with each other. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. A lot of y'all may not like this one. <laughs> I just, just want to be real with you. You may not like it, but hear me out. Hear me out. The other thing that you should be doing rather than just waiting for his text, is be willing to reach out and text him again.